joining us today, uh, Mr. Jim Douglas. Uh, our director is now going to kick off the meeting, and we welcome you, Jim. Well, good morning, good morning. everyone. And uh, I want to welcome you to the 2020 Virtual R3 Summit. I, uh, I'm excited with the participation level that, that we have today. And uh, uh, I appreciate, uh, you know, everyone uh, making the special effort that it takes to, you know, join a, a virtual meeting like this. You know, I think that we're learning some things, you know, in these current times that are so trying to us in so many different ways. Uh, you know, we look for silver linings. And one of the things that we found at the Nebraska Game of Parks Commission is that, you know, this way of communicating has its place. And it probably has a place as we move forward in even more communication efforts. It will never replace all the benefits of certain kinds of face-to-face -face meetings, but we're able to, uh, to actually uh, maneuver through quite a few uh, issues uh, via this, this kind of uh, meeting. And uh, so I hope that we embrace it today, uh, that, you, that you familiarize yourself uh, if, you, if you are not already, you know, with the functions, the chat functions, uh, you know, and so on and so forth, uh, muting and going on and off a of camera and so on and so forth. But uh, it's no different than, you know, taking your, taking your break if you're sitting in a room or whatever. Uh, but anyway, it is, I think, going to be something as we move forward and we think about, you know, the great need to actually communicate uh, not only all the successes that we're having, uh, but, you know, the new ideas that are, that are coming up, the, the, the programming that's going on across the wider region than just Nebraska, you know, this will become a part of the way that we communicate part of that. So thank you again. You know, uh, you are, all of you are our partners in this uh, great effort that we're undertaking to uh, recruit, re recruit, retain, and reactivate uh, hunters and fishers and other outdoor enthusiasts. And, uh, we really want to tell you how much we appreciate that. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting actually right now. There's a lot of things that are, that are happening. And I think a, a wider audience than just the uh, usual suspects are, are really understanding, you know, the great benefits of the outdoor activities that we're promoting. Uh, I'll give you a, a little a little example here that's uh, sort of was very revealing to a lot of people in Nebraska. For example, we, you know, we know that we know that uh, that hunting and fishing, you know, is a great economic factor uh, across the nation, right? So, so this spring in Nebraska, there was a lot of uh, uh, trepidation, a lot of worry, a lot of it was. Uh, certainly a reasonable worry about what would happen with non-resident turkey hunters coming into Western Nebraska where, where COVID wasn't very uh, prominent at the time, but it was prominent in a lot of the states where non-residents come from. And so there was a lot of discussions that went into uh, what was a final decision uh, to uh, not welcome our non-resident turkey hunters uh, into the state. And, uh, I had a lot of discussions with the regional health directors, with the governor, with our commissioners, with sportsmen, uh, with Wild Turkey Federation, and especially with local community leaders, uh, restaurant uh, tours and, and hotels. And, and it was a very hard decision. It cost, uh, you know, so when that economic picture comes back, you know, and hits you right in the face, then everybody thinks about it harder. It costs $1.25 million in revenue directly to Nebraska Game of Parks. But when we know that, that hunters, that non-resident hunters spend, you know, four to seven times the amount of the permit when they come here on all these services and so on, that shows you what the economic uh, impact was of that quick decline in a hunting population. So when we see the declines that happen, and, and fortunately not as, not as uh, severe in Nebraska or happening in Nebraska as it is across the nation, but when we see those declines and they're slower, when they're slower, it's, you know, when things are happening slower, sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't hit you right in the face about how important it really is. But we're, but we're learning that you know, economically, it's super important to 
Nebraska and other states, but it's also, we're learning how important it is to the well being of communities overall and how important it is to the well being of us as a society and to us as uh, for our mental health. One of the interesting phenomena is on the other side of the coin that's happened this year in Nebraska is that you know people were looking for a way to go outdoors and do things. Our fishing license sales have skyrocketed this year. And so people were looking for a way to socially distance and still get outside in the fresh air and so on and so forth. And we're doing research now to find out how many of these people that were fishing this year that weren't fishing last year or the year before that or the year before that are new fishers, new people to the sport, or are they reactivated uh, and, and now? But we have a great opportunity in that arena to build on that, you know, and maintain that momentum that we have in that arena. We're also seeing increased uh, demand for a lot of our hunting permits for this fall. So, so the silver lining, I guess, you know, and we certainly need them these days, the silver lining might be that we can find out more about uh, our hunting and fishing public and find out more about those that are either being reactivated or becoming uh, new to the sport. And we're going to build on that momentum, I hope. The other, the other thing that uh, I wanted to share with you is that one of the most important things that I think uh, uh, has happened recently are a couple national efforts. Uh, one of them is the, the passage of the uh, moderniza PR, pittman Robertson Modernization Act uh, by Congress, which, which uh, essentially allows for a greater percentage of pittman robertson dollars you know the excise tax on hunting and hunting and uh, equipment and firearms and ammunition to be devoted to r3 efforts uh currently or before that there was this only a certain percentage and a fairly low percentage of the total pr the state had that could be devoted to that activity and now that's increased by quite a bit that opens up a lot more opportunities Additionally, there's uh, any, any PR dollars that uh, aren't obligated in the, in, the, in the timely fashion that's allowed by the law in a state goes into uh, a, a source of income back to states through granting programs. And these granting programs uh, have several million dollars a year in them. And now there's specific uh, opportunity developed by rules uh, of the Department of Interior to allow a uh, portion of that to go to R3 projects. So this has opened up a lot of avenues for cl cross collaboration between states uh, and funding different programs. Uh, I know that uh, Jeff may talk more about this later, but we've got some really exciting cross boundary projects uh, in the works with other Midwest states. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of good things happening, a lot of good things happening on the front. You know, in last year's summit, a lot of the ideas that came about, you know, resulted in tangible new programming. For example, uh, uh, the, the program that's just, you know, getting its feet under it, which is the uh, extended opportunity for youth to to participate in uh, shooting hunting activities at, at controlled shooting areas through a partnership of next steps uh, with some of the partners uh, along with Game of Parks. That's exciting and there's a lot of, uh, a lot of new partners that come, come, are coming into the mix in that program. You know, the other, a uh, couple of other programs that uh, last year that through the Game of Parks eyes that were successful uh, were the Take Them Hunting program, the Take Them Fishing program. Uh, up between those two programs, 7,000 new participants uh, that we can count. And I think the popularity of those programs, again, goes back to the uh, increasing realization of families and, and other people who enjoy the outdoors that, that this is something to share that's good for our, good for our mental health, good for our well-being uh, overall and good for Nebraska. So uh, all the partners have been really active. Uh, those activities are resulting and emanating uh, in, in things that uh, transform into regional and national efforts. 
And uh, so there's a lot more that will be shared during the course of this, of this event today. So I mainly want to say thank you and uh, uh, have your, have your no, I, no ideas will go unnoticed. Uh, all the ideas that people have, all the experiences that you have, the successes, uh, the questions, uh, anything that you thought we might uh, as a partnership coalition be able to do better. Uh, all those things are gonna come together and with better outcomes for our, our shared mission here. Uh, so with that, uh, Jeff, I'll turn it back to you and just wanna say, I'm gonna participate in, in all of this today. I think, you know, we think uh, it's that important. Uh, one of the most important uh, initiatives that we all need to take uh, to to keep our keep our activities uh, vibrant. So thank you very much, all of you. Thank you, Director Douglas, and and thank you for your leadership in this in this arena, both in Nebraska uh, as well at the national level. We really appreciate that, and and appreciate those those remarks. Uh, I'm going to, to uh, uh, take the next step here uh, in, the, in, the, in the meeting and uh, kind of give us a little bit of, a, of a, uh, a rehash as to where we came from from the last year's summit and where we're heading. When I'm done here in the next few minutes, then I'm going to bring in a number of different speakers who are going to talk about some of these efforts. Uh, and as Director Douglas had mentioned, some of these, all of them, really exciting new efforts uh, or ongoing efforts that I think uh, communities across the state uh, could be involved in, whether it's uh, organizations, communities, uh, staff, and so forth. And so with that, I'm gonna start our, our, our uh, slideshow presentation here. Uh, since the last summit, uh, we, we really were able to break down a couple of uh, different directions from the discussion from all of our partners uh, in 2019. And those, that direction boiled down to three main areas, and those were mentor tools and management, filling gaps, and targeting new audiences. And what we were looking at there, what those boiled down to is that uh, it, it was clear that mentoring is a very key element in the direction of our R3 efforts in Nebraska and across the, the, the Midwest and the country for that, mat, uh, for that matter. Uh, and that we all in, across the country have many, many gaps in our programs. We're no different here in Nebraska, whether it's all the way down at our own individual program level or at the state level. And we are continuing to fill those gaps and to provide pathways for people from the first time they postulate the idea that they might want to try these activities uh, to the moment uh, that they might consider themselves a, a, a veteran in these uh, particular activities. And then, of course, targeting new audiences. And you're going to hear a lot more about this over the next two hours. And you're going to hear a lot more about this nationally with good reason. It's vital. It's very important to the R3 efforts and the viability of state fish and wildlife agencies. And, uh, and there are a lot of really cool things that uh, we're able to do to do that. Under the Mentor Tools Management, we shared a vision that uh, we can have huge impacts on mentoring of, of new and current hunters, anglers, and shooting sports participants. Uh, that vision is getting shared nationwide, but uh, Nebraska took the lead uh, with one of the most profound, I think, uh, communication uh, campaigns in the country. And that was our Take Em Hunting, Take Em Fishing campaign that the director alluded to. Several thousand new hunters and new anglers uh, came into the mix last year uh, because of these efforts because of your efforts in doing so and a phenomenal effort for any state and uh, excited to continue forward with that. Uh, as you know, as, as Director Douglas alluded to, we apply and work through many states on multi-state grants. Uh, this has helped us learn uh, a lot about existing hunters and anglers uh, through a, a grant that was uh, uh, achieved last year and, uh, and, and what we're learning more about new participants and, and how to bring those new participants together. Uh, and we'll talk more about that over the next couple hours. In filling gaps, the commission, along with the incredibly committed uh, partnership base, have many, many programs designed to reach one area of the uh, outdoor recreation adoption model and or another. And we're going to share a little bit with you on that as well. We've been working with partners over the last several years to help fill those gaps in providing pathways for people to uh, partake in these time-honored 
outdoor activities that are so vital, not only to us, but to communities across the state of Nebraska. Uh, if you look at this model, uh, you can see clearly uh, where many of your programs will fall. And this model is not new to, uh, to most people on this call. Uh, but whether a person starts out at awareness uh, and understands they become aware of hunting or fishing, uh, they take an interest in the, in the ideology or a particular element uh, and move them to the trial stage where they actually try it for the first time. Uh, very big decision point there uh, when they make their, after their first trial that so many of us on this call today and across the, the, the nation are involved in providing that first effort. That critical decision, do I continue or not? Did I enjoy it? Is it something I wanna do again? They make that decision to continue with support. Uh, from that decision to continue with support, if all goes well, they continue on at some point where they don't need support. Uh, that mentor relationship may last, or it may be something that uh, after a period of time, uh, they're able to do these things without the support uh, uh, that was given to them. And of course, they make that call to uh, then continue on, maybe lapse, uh, and then reactivate. And we're looking now at all of our different programs and where they fit within this model and how we're able to manipulate this model or manipulate our programs in this model to provide people with every step that they need uh, in this pathway so that the decision process is fairly easy and straightforward for them. Under targeting new audiences, and this is one that I said you're going to hear quite a bit about over the next uh, several months, both nationally and in Nebraska as well, there's a lot to be gained here. Uh, we're a very small audience as hunters and anglers uh, currently uh, with respect to what we have as a percentage of the state of Nebraska, and that audience is going to grow. Uh, the 2019 multi-state grant funded program will help us reach new millennials. Uh, in a way that uh, targets the science behind what we know about millennials and, and, and how we engage millennials uh, to join us uh, in these time-honored traditions. Uh, enhanced outreach efforts for women. Our outreach efforts programs and with our partners collectively have grown by leaps and bounds and they're gonna continue to grow as women become and continue to be one of the fastest growing segments of the hunting, fishing, and shooting sports across the country as well in Nebraska. We also understand that not just because of current times, but people have been finding, searching more and more online for opportunities to enhance their own education. We're going to be expanding those opportunities and continue to expand those online. So today, I invite you to learn from our, our partners, learn from our staff, learn from the speakers here today uh, about the shared vision, shared programs, and, and efforts that will have major impacts uh, on these scenarios across Nebraska over the next couple of years. And after the presentations are over, we're gonna invite you to a series of meetings and workshops to, ver to dive in or dig in into areas that most engage you and you find most engaging to be involved in. And then we'll direct you to those meetings that we're gonna be hosting in September, as long with online resources to help continue this conversation and continue this engagement uh, throughout the year. Once again, thank you. Look forward to the presentations that are about to unfold and enjoy the conference. Our first speaker is going to be Aaron Harrisburg, who is an outdoor education specialist with the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission to talk about one of our very, very new and interesting hunting initiatives moving forward. Thanks, Jeff. Um, and I've got just a, a few minutes to do this. We got a lot of great things packed into today's uh, uh, morning of events. So uh, this is an idea that's been kicked around by not just Nebraska, but some other states. It's in response to uh, many things and, and uh, experiences that we all have each fall, each spring, uh, getting questions from people that either want to help or those that are, that are looking for help. And we've kind of got a working title called the Nebraska Hunting Network right now. Uh, we're working with some other uh, states and uh, groups to, uh, to expand upon this. And again, we get calls each and every year from folks either after programs or just spontaneously wanting to get to know how to hunt or where they can find more information or somebody, most importantly, somebody to go with that can teach them some of these things on a pretty 
one-on-one uh, -on -one basis oftentimes or in, in very small groups. Uh, we also get the opposite. We get folks that call us up and say, hey, like to take somebody out with me uh, and uh, I've got a few days that I can do it. I got just this real quick window of opportunity. This is what I want. This is what, and uh, it's just hard to create an actual program or event around these small instances or uh, occasions. However, harnessing those together, uh, we think we can make an impact and allow folks to do just that, help others out there, uh, perhaps, you know, in the take them uh, challenges and promotions, there are folks that would be engaged that don't have somebody at home, that don't have somebody that they know uh, that is wanting to go out and be a part of this, that they can they can help and, and make an impact in their lives. So we're kind of looking at that as an opportunity to help grow and engage our current users and those that are so motivated to uh, do just that, to, to help further the cause on there. You can see some of the, you might call them challenges, we kind of see them as opportunities out there. Uh, with that social support, moving them through that adoption model that, that Jeff already showed, but also filling that uh, gap between those that want to go and those that are wanting to help with an online vehicle or bridge, if you will, uh, to make that happen. There's the need out there, and we oftentimes hear one of the big reasons people don't take another one hunting or fishing is because they don't get asked. And we hear it on the opposite as well. Those that want to go hunting and fishing oftentimes don't know who to ask, or they would go if they were asked. And so we're gonna provide that ask kind of between the, the both of them as well. So. The idea is to create and, and use technology to our advantage to help kind of minimize. We don't have uh, many Julia Plugies. We don't have enough Roger Coons. We don't have enough Larry Papes. Uh, we don't have enough uh, Holly Greens out there to do this one-on-one. -on -one. We take on our own challenges and, and uh, individuals each year uh, season, but at the same time, we want to engage those uh, to be able to increase the impact on that. So we're looking at an online way that we can network these folks that want to go, those that want to help, and uh, connect them that have sim uh, similar interests. But it's kind of interesting now, and you think back to your middle school dance days, you'd be more willing to ask that individual to dance if you already knew they were gonna say yes. And I think you see that a lot of times on these online connection services is, hey, I like you, you like me, here we go. Or we have similarities in common and we're gonna meet up to, to go uh, put, that, uh, put that to the use. In this case, hunting, fishing, angling, that type of thing. And we also wanna give a next step for those that are part of the take them hunting challenge, but maybe they wanna do a little bit more beyond their own sphere of influence and expand and, and be more of the, the answer to this, as well as a chance to, to network and uh, see where we can find and, and learn a, a little bit more. So that's the concept. And right now we are in the midst of providing this mentoring tool uh, and putting more meat to the bones and more meat to the concept. And it's kind of neat, as been mentioned a couple times, we're working with several Midwestern states uh, to help create this uh, and to uh, put some more ideas and making sure we've learned from past events and opportunities uh, to make this what folks need. And that's that little bit more intimate, uh, small circle, the way we can connect with other folks and actually get them out on the, the landscape. So when we sat down and, and uh, started talking about these key concepts, as you can imagine, we, we have the opportunities, we have some of the, the fun challenges, you have some of the ideas behind that. But when you need to really get moving forward, you grab a whiteboard, you grab some colored markers, you start making some really cool shapes and designs and arrows, and you kind of start thinking it all out. And we kind of started with the working name again, Nebraska Hunting Network. You can kind of see where we were going with some of this. Uh, that one's really in depth. We can share that uh, at another time. But the simple version of it is, in this next slide, you'll see where folks that are interested, and we're gonna market it to those that give us a call, those that come up after the event, hey, this was a wonderful ladies event. My husband or my boyfriend or my significant other uh, is really interested in doing this and being actually getting out in the field, as well as those that say, hey, I've got a great opportunity to bring a couple people out to my duck pit, uh, and I'm really, I don't know who they are, but I'd really like to help out on such and such weekend or such and such days. Uh, we have a, an answer and a place to send them. So online, those new and existing users can come in, register, uh, so that we can start going through and helping them out. Whether it's new 
and some learn to hunt how to type online resources that uh, we've got videos within our own agency. We know other states and NGOs like Pheasants Forever, uh, NWTF have some of those as well. We also know that groups such as Calc and I are, are working on them as well, where they can learn some of that stuff as well. But also we want to provide some online training to those that want to help out. Here's the best uh, cases to help. Here's how to help mentor. This is how to go about doing this, making sure everyone's comfortable, safe, and all that good stuff. And then online, we're able to perhaps match them up uh, say, all right, these folks want to learn pheasant hunting. This group wants to help you pheasant hunt, and they're in the same locality. They're interested in the same methods, uh, and uh, let's match them up, and then they can go on and, and perhaps meet up, whether it's virtually on Zoom, such as what we're doing today, or an actual pub night put on by, say, a, a you know, Nebraska Fish and Game Association or a, the Cornhusker Fly uh, Fisherman, that type of thing, or individually. Uh, whatever they feel the most comfortable with to get them out into the field shooting and, and take them through that that O-RAM just a little bit further. That's the the idea boiled down to, to one slide, obviously a little bit of a simplification there. Uh, so I'm sure there's going to be a few questions you can give them to us uh, once we share the, the Google uh, question sheet here in, in uh, just a few moments. But again, that's the idea. Having an answer for those coming to us looking to help or those looking for help and, and learning how to, to get involved in these things. So that's my, my little speech in a, a few minutes. If you have questions, feel free to type them in either in the chat or in the Google documents. You'll get a link for here in just a bit. I know we're going on to our next um, exciting uh, opportunity here, filling the gaps. Uh, and we've got uh, Holly Green from Pheasants Forever, who's uh, in a really unique position of not only coordinating some R3 aspects uh, for that uh, wonderful group, but also uh, being able to answer the question of, all right, we've taken on this youth hunt, what do we do next? So I'm gonna... Hey, Karen. Um, so I will be discussing the Next Step program. It's a partnership between the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission and Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever of Nebraska. Where is that? So this is okay, and the next one. So I just briefly wanted to share some of our contact information since today is just going to be a teaser of the Next Step program, I wanted to provide you with the resources if you are interested in more of it. So you'll find our link listed at top, as well as State Coordinator Kelsey Wehrman's contact information, and then my own. So this all started with filling the gaps, and we have an extremely successful program called Youth Mentor Hunts in the state of Nebraska, where our Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever chapters lead in that. And we are celebrating 25 years in 2021. But the gap was, what do these youth do next? Do they have the confidence to continue in the hunting tradition? So we decided to pair with the University of Nebraska at Lincoln and collect some data and we used hunter identification numbers to help track that. So from hunter's education, we found that 50% of them continued on to buy a license later on. When compared with our youth mentor hunts, we saw that was 70%. So we saw a 20% increase just by offering a mentoring hunt opportunity. So we asked ourselves, what would happen if we could take that one more step? And so we developed the idea of the Next Steps program. It launched late in the year of 2019, early 2020 season. And it's a little bit different than our youth mentor hunts in the aspect that it's not a bunch of participants in one day, rather more one-on-one -on -one based with an individual. And so these participants would have to graduate hunter's education and a youth mentor hunt day with one of our chapters. And then they would have to participate in our rules of three. So we would have a mentor, a mentee, and then a mentee's parent or guardian. So we would potentially be introducing two new hunters to the lifelong tradition. These three individuals would then go on three separate dates and each have the potential of harvesting three birds, all at, expenses, at no expenses. We partnered with controlled shooting areas or CSAs for controllability over the situation as well as measurability. 
So you'll see a photo here of Oak Creek as they were one of the first CSAs to participate in it. We are now in year one looking for more chapters to adopt the program and continue building the confidence in the hunting tradition, as well as potentially increase those license sales from our youth. What's the next step for you? If you're a Pheasants Forever or Quill Forever chapter listening in today, then I encourage you to adopt the program into your chapter and you can contact Kelsey or myself for more information. If you're not a Pheasants Forever or Quill Forever member, you can mentor a youth in any of the species you have knowledge on. Share that experience and help build the confidence in the hunting and fishing traditions. This next one is a video that we have created to help build the excitement on mentoring experiences. The flush of a rooster, the excitement of a hunt. Youth mentor hunts hosted by Nebraska's Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever chapters, along with the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission, celebrate 25 years of teaching our youth the tradition of hunting. It's an entire day that is dedicated to youth being mentored. We're very well organized and, and making sure that parents feel safe with me taking their kid out in the outdoors. This is one-on-one -on -one mentee mentor education. It's a safe and fun way to introduce kids to the outdoors of hunting. It's a great way to make new friends and give kids the opportunity to gain confidence from the sport of hunting and create memories through hunting experience. Taking those kids out and seeing the smiles on their faces when they shoot their first bird, or even if they don't happen to get a bird, you know, keeping them smiling, keeping them laughing, you know, watching them around the dog. Just the joy on these kids' faces that they don't understand what they're getting into. And once the day is over, it's like, oh my gosh, I just experienced an amazing event. The mentors that we have, they do it for the same reason I do. They believe in getting youth into the outdoors. And I'll tell you, it's amazing to see some of these kids who turn around and come back as mentors. I don't think any of us would do it without having the passion. We're all volunteers and we're volunteers for the mission volunteers for the events, we're volunteers for Habitat and youth and being in. The flush of a rooster. Okay. Amazing to see some of these kids who turn around and come back as mentors. I don't think any of us would do it without having the passion. We're all volunteers and we're volunteers for the mission. We're volunteers for the events, we're volunteers for Habitat and youth and being in the outdoors. I would encourage anyone, and especially women that are curious about becoming a mentor to give it a try. I came from a non-hunting family, so I want to give others the opportunity to learn to shoot and hunt at a young age. With hunter populations declining, our hunter heritage is at risk along with conservation funds to protect the wildlife and land we all love. By becoming a mentor today and sharing your knowledge and experience, you can help keep the hunting tradition alive. Click the links below to learn more. If you would like to help continue the success of Youth Mentor Hunts but cannot participate, consider helping in another way by donating today. And so that video will be airing with a series that we're continuing on. That one will air in September. Again, I know today was just a teaser. So if you're interested in the Next Steps program, uh, feel free to reach out any of these resource methods and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Our next speaker is going to be our three coordinator with the Nebraska um, National Wild Turkey Federation, Michaela Ray. She will be sharing online resources, which was a part of the targeting new audience. Michaela? Awesome. Well, thanks, Holly, and thanks everyone for being here today. Um, some of you have probably heard this story before, but when I started in this position four years ago, I had a parent call me and they were interested in getting their child involved in hunting, um, but they didn't know where to look when it came to teaching their child how to hunt. And so I asked them, you know, well, where have you been looking? What comes to mind as you're trying to find these resources? And they said, the only thing that we've thought to look at is Cabela's. 
So we went to an R3 task force meeting then shortly after that, and I was telling this story to the group, and it brought to light that we needed to start creating some more resources for new hunters. And in doing this, uh, we created what we called the Learn to Hunt Nebraska website. It's learntohuntnebraska.org. And on this website, you'll see a variety of resources for new hunters. Um, it's grown over the years uh, as to content that we have on the website. And so I wanted to highlight some of the new pieces that we've been working on. And for the first time, I think I can say I'm a little bit thankful for COVID-19 because it's given me an opportunity to really develop this website and put some effort into these resources. So some of you might have seen um, our trip planners in Nebraska that show hunters, you know, where to find a certain species, things to look for. And so we wanted to create a document that accompanies these trip planners. And so what I have on the screen for you right now is an example of our beginner's turkey hunting guide that we released this spring to accompany that turkey hunting um, trip planner. So we wanted to provide hunters, new hunters, established hunters, whatever it might be, um, some generic information on turkeys. So things to look for, what, how do you identify a species, um, a tom versus a hen. We wanted to give them basic information about permits because we do receive feedback sometimes that uh, finding out what permits you need can be difficult, so we wanted to break it down. Uh, we provided basic information about hunter education, and then one of the pieces that I really enjoyed getting into, especially as a novice hunter myself, was thinking about the things that you actually needed to go hunting. And sometimes as um, an experienced hunter, it's easy to think about all the stuff you love to take out into the field with you, but we really wanted to break it down into the basics. What do you really need to get into the field? So you'll see where we've created some must-haves and some nice-to-haves. We also talk a little bit about habitat, and then we show our population maps here in Nebraska to give people an idea on where they can find the species that they're looking for. So if you visit learntohuntnebraska.org, you will see um, beginner, or beginner hunter guides up there now for deer and turkey, and we are working on waterfowl, and we have um, pheasant hunting done as well. Another thing that we are working on adding to the website this year are video resources. This is something we've wanted to do for a long time and just haven't been able to get it under our belt. And so this spring, we started recording uh, somewhere between 30 and 40 second clips on tips for new hunters. And as we approach a variety of hunting seasons this fall, we're going to go ahead and add tips for deer, waterfowl, upland game as well. Um, but I wanted to share with you one of our videos that we created for spring turkey turkey hunters. So let's see if we can get our technology to work here this morning. Silence can be your friend in the turkey woods. Obviously when those birds can see your movement, it's also that gobbler that answers every call but doesn't get any closer. Give him the cold shoulder, go silent. He might think another Tom has come to steal his girlfriend and he's going to come investigate. So that just gives you an idea of the short clips. We've done everything about blind or no blind. What type of calls do you want to use? What type of habitat are you looking at? How do you scout for a bird? Um, so keep your eye on the learntohuntnebraska.org website as well as on the Game and Parks Facebook page because all the videos are being shared on the Game and Parks Facebook page during the appropriate season. And then you can go back and look at previous videos on the website. So speaking of the website, I wanted to give you all a glimpse at what we've been working on. Um, again, we're relying on some technology here and it looks like we're doing good so far. So this is our Learn to Hunt Nebraska website. What it does is it breaks down information for that novice hunter and we start the website by offering what we consider our five easy steps to get hunting. Finding your, your permits, taking hunter education, the appropriate information on laws and rigs, where to hunt, and getting ready for the season. Um, we also provide information on upcoming workshops that you can attend. We've got that information on the beginning hunter guides that I was just showing you. And then we also break down programs for women, families, and our shooting sports facilities. Um, we were hoping to make this website super easy to navigate for that novice hunter 
Um, and then the website also has a variety of other components that you can check out. When you go to um, letsgohuntingnebraska.org, uh, you'll also see some information on how to become a mentor, different mentor events, and getting involved in shooting sports as well. And I think that you're only going to see this website grow as the months and years go on. And we're really excited to be working on this project for all of you. So next up, we are going to bring Jeff Rawlinson back on screen, and he's going to talk to us a little bit more about millennial marketing videos and how we're working with different states across the Midwest. Thanks, Michaela. As Director Douglas had alluded to earlier uh, in the meeting, uh, we've been working with states across the country, and particularly uh, through the Midwest Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies to uh, enhance our three efforts at the regional level realizing that together we can achieve quite a bit more than uh, states can do uh, by themselves. Uh, one of the grants that uh, was uh, put together last year uh, through uh, a series of partner states and the Wildlife Management Institute focuses on millennials. And this has been a really exciting project because millennials represent the largest population segment here in the United States. But they currently have not had the cultural connectivity to some of the time honored traditions uh, in, in large numbers uh, as uh, generations before them have, and that's a real concern. So the, the effort has been forth to develop quality uh, marketing resources to better reach millennials. Uh, research suggests a, a more emotional engagement is needed, and that's not something that uh, uh, we've uh, put together or had tools for in the past. Uh, we're looking to motivate the millennials to participate, obviously, in hunting and fishing and build excitement about social and personal benefits uh, of involve, involvement to hunting and fishing. Of the things we know about millennials is that uh, uh, they have, they, they, they view things just a little bit differently uh, than, uh, and, and do things a little bit differently than a lot of the uh, folks uh, involved in hunting and fishing are familiar with over the last, you know, 50, 60 years or so. Average millennial spends over two hours uh, daily on social media. Uh, more than 80% use videos in their decision-making uh, purchase uh, for making purchases uh, online or uh, in person even. Uh, most follow companies and or brands on social media and they're very loyal to those companies and or brands. Uh, very, very prolific shopping generation. Uh, drawn to causes, and this is an area that I think that works very well for hunting and fishing. Uh, they're drawn to causes they can feel good about and directly participate in. They want to help shape a better tomorrow. And that's v directly in line with our vision uh, and, and our, our conservation mission. And with the right content, uh, they can do a lot of marketing for us uh, to help reach their friends and family. Uh, so through the grant, the AFWA uh, multi-state grant with the Wildlife Management Institute, it's going to provide us with uh, 16 to 32 short form videos uh, video templates that we can use uh, in state agencies, partners across the board uh, for reaching millennials, uh, short content from 15, 30, 45 uh, segment, uh, minute, second segments all the way up to one to five minute segments. Uh, it'll be adaptable for multiple formats and they'll allow users to tailor and deploy these videos uh, in imagery on multiple platforms so that we can tailor them to our, our, our own communities, our own organizations and our own needs. Uh, they'll better represent millennials in hunting and shooting uh, as conservationists and supporters of wildlife, certainly uh, you know, adhering to that mission-focused ideology that uh, is very consistent with millennials, and help millennials to make a more personal and intimate connection uh, to conservation. We hope to have these out in the next uh, several months, and when these are available, uh, we'll be pushing these out to all partners involved so that we can begin using these in our marketing and, and uh, advertising efforts. And we really are excited about the opportunity to finally be able to reach millennials where they're at using content that we believe uh, definitely will appeal to them. Okay, our next speaker is gonna be one of our outdoor education specialists here at the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission, Julia Plugi. She's taken the leadership role on outreach programs to women, not only in Nebraska, uh, but across the, the Midwest as well. And she's here to share uh, some really innovative ideas and efforts that are moving forward collectively here in Nebraska and throughout the Midwest. Julia? Thank you, Jeff. Uh, super excited to share our um, opportunities that we are spreading regionally 
and throughout the state itself. So about six months ago, maybe almost a year ago, um, I was heavy into listening to podcasts, still are, but I was searching, trying to find a podcast that fit me as a mom, as a female, that is interested in the outdoors, wanting to learn more about the hunting, shooting world, just basic um, outdoor skills. And so listening to podcasts, uh, searching the engines, trying to find something that best fit me and what I wanted to learn more about, I was really struggling. I just could not find that niche that I could hear and listen to. So with that, you know, I thought, you know, why not jump on board and create our own podcast? So while I'm learning, then I can find out the information, find a co-host, and we can share it with um, other like-minded females. And so there we had it. So Michaela Ray and I joined forces and created this podcast called She Goes Outdoors. And as you can kind of see, just the last three episodes of ours is on there, whether it's, it's diverse. We did a mushroom segment, camping, uh, and now we're bringing on these new hosts, which I will um, expand on that idea here soon. But Overall, we just wanted to reach that uh, female participation, knowing that they are the new audience of the fastest growing segment of the hunting and shooting world. Um, so moving on, you know, our next project that, as we segmented into the regional effort, um, Nebraska reached out to Iowa and some of the other regional F states nearby, and we did what we called a huddle. It wasn't necessarily a conference because we weren't um, like more of a conference of where you're just learning. Now huddle is we're going to huddle, we're going to come together, and we're going to discuss what, how can we learn from each other, um, how can we benefit from benefit from our strengths, benefit from our weaknesses, and to help each other out with the same initiative of getting women in the outdoors. And so we huddled together here in Nebraska. Uh, last summer, great response, many states involved. Uh, they joined forces here in Lincoln. Well, the plan was to meet again this summer in Iowa. Well, as we all know, that just didn't happen this summer as it wasn't going to happen. And we weren't gonna stop our efforts there just because we couldn't personally meet. And so we started communicating again, just uh, virtually. And we started evolving some different ideas. Of, you know, we, all of our events were being canceled in person canceled. We did not want to, but because of that, we still needed to reach this audience that wanted to learn of the outdoors. And so we came together, knowing that the subscription box idea, this concept is very popular right now. Whether you're getting a subscription box of product to take you on the field, a new product, learn how to do something, maybe it's a subscription box even of clothing to try out seeking that that because we couldn't get them in person we wanted to take that material to them so here's where we evolved this education in a box or like a subscription box so we teamed together with Kansas and Iowa and that's where you may have started seeing some marketing efforts uh, across either coming out from any of our states to present this idea so we are continuing to provide information, hands-on communication to our, either our Becoming an Opera Women participants, the WIDO participants, and reaching those new audiences that don't even know these uh, particular programs are available. So there's really, while we use the word subscription, it is more of just a concept that people can connect with something maybe they've already seen, but it's not really a subscription. It's just, um, you're not committed to exactly getting a box that you want to do or you just want to pick up. Um, you pick and choose the interest in levels that you want to participate in. So currently um, it goes by season. So um, the upcoming season, the women are now um, subscribing for an upcoming box that will teach them the skill, provide them the gear and the materials to go on a visit hunt. And so they're gonna get these boxes in the mail. It's going to be gear to help them there. They will connect with us through a virtual workshop, a live Zoom and webinars. We provide them the tools at their customer's pace. And um, then they will connect with us. And then in the long run, hopefully then we can get them in the field with a mentored um, experience. You know, we started with the pheasant hunt because 
you know, you're, it's easier to socially distance with a mentored um, hunt in the pheasant world. So we're pretty excited. You can see the regional partners at the bottom of the screen there. Uh, we have created a website that expands a lot beyond more of just this, um, this particular topic. So more in detail of what is in the box. We get that a lot of questions. What, you know, when I get this box, what am I going to find? Well, we wanted to kind of keep it a bit of a secret. You know, we've also kind of given some teasers as this, this box is going to be super heavy. You know, you, you have that feeling, oh, heavy. This is, I'm going to get a lot of cool product in this. Um, we have a multiple focus mixed seasonal content. So like I said, the first one that's coming out is uh, focused on fall hunting. Uh, we're going to you know, hunt with a mentor while social distancing and following those CDC guidelines. Uh, the similar season dates across the state. That is why we went with pheasant and upland game. Um, the next box that will be released out is birding, winter birding. So we, you know, our goal is to have these participants that get that box to join us with the, um, the goal of both Kansas, Iowa, and Nebraska, you know, na even nationally, the Christmas bird count. And uh, we have the next box would be outdoor cooking and gathering for the spring effort. And then in the summer, our focus will be fishing. So we're pretty excited to what we can put in these boxes to engage them. Um, they learn at home and then they will go into the field and use that material that they learn. So the full, um, full of the content, the box is full of content, like I've said. It's equipped with tools needed to pursue the outdoor skills. We're including printed and virtual resources and instructions guiding them from field to fork. You know, they're, they're learning the skill, the material at home, and then hope that they get to the field and then return back home um, with their harvested, their harvested uh, success. The Conservation Organization Annual Membership. So we're really excited with this first box as a partnership with Pheasants Forever. They are going to receive an annual membership and then some encouragement then as well is to participate in Win on the Wing. Um, we're really excited to, you know, just not that they participate in becoming an outdoor woman or the widow, but also reach out and participate, uh, join those conservation um, organizations like so many of you are providing yourselves. And then again, in that in-field experience, we want to get them in the field. So, you know, this is just a glimpse of how we are reaching um, our target audience, knowing that the females is a fastest growing adult or a fastest growing segment out there. And we're hoping that these new pieces will get them involved in the outdoors using both um, those, maybe the audience that's not able to meet us in person workshops and just checking on these different niches. So. And from there, I, we are now going to take just a quick five minute break, go fill your coffee cups, use the restroom, uh, refresh and stretch. And from there, when we return back in five minutes, uh, we are going to talk about the R3 fishing initiatives. Thank you. All right, everyone, we'll see you back at about 11.02. <laughs> I, I hate like looking at a blank computer talking. I just don't like it. Oh.
I can't with my screen share, Jeff. Okay. All right, everyone, we're going to bring you back in here and get things started. So it's 11.02 and we're going to get connected with the fisheries side of things. So Larry, are you there? Yep, I'm here. And I think Kurt is the first up. So Kurt, uh, Kurt Sievers, the youth fishing instructor. Um, are you there, Kurt? Yeah. yeah, I'm here, ready to go. All right. I just wanted to spend a few minutes this morning and uh, talk a little bit about some of the resources that we have available to us as uh, youth fishing instructors. Uh, there's quite a few things that uh, have been made available to us, and uh, a lot of the, the resources that we have uh, came from ideas from volunteers like myself. And uh, we've taken those ideas and developed them into the, the, the list of things that you see on the screen here. And a uh, couple of things that I wanted to spend a little bit of time on. Uh, the, the trailers that we have available, we can, for depending on the size of the group that you want to, uh, to work with, we have resources where we have pre-rigged uh, rods and reels ready to go. Uh, in trailers that you can hook onto and pull to your event. So for a larger event, uh, we've got 40 or 50 rods in a trailer and it's real easy to uh, to take those. They're ready to go. All you need is bait and, you, and you're ready to go. We also have loaner equipment that can be checked out. That comes out of the, uh, the SRAM Aquarium down at Gretna. And uh, those will come in uh, 15 rods in a box. Those need to be assembled once you get them and then disassembled and uh, shipped back to the aquarium when you're through. Uh, those are really helpful. Uh, the, the thing that's really nice to have about the equipment that we have available to us is that it's the same uh, all the way through. Uh, the, uh, the trailers all have one piece rods, very simple spin cast reels, and a simple uh, bobber hook and weight uh, rigging so that uh, uh, the the equipment is very simple and easy for people to use. And uh, the funding for a lot of these things comes from uh, donations and grants. Uh, if anybody's got any questions on some of that, I'm sure Larry can kind of help fill in on that. Some of the other materials that are available to us are the website and uh, we have scheduling calendars on there so that people can put their own events up. Uh, and then we also have the, uh, the agency sponsored events that show up there as well so people can take advantage of the, uh, the opportunities that uh, exist out there. There's a variety of publications, uh, lots of different kinds of resource materials available from Game and Parks, uh, the fishing guide, uh, there's a going fishing book, a lot of really good uh, information in those. Uh, there's also a newsletter and you see an example of the Fishtails newsletter on the slide. And uh, that's a great way for us to communicate uh, things that are changing in the program or going on in the program and uh, just a good way to communicate things that are happening that way. Social media is another thing that, uh, that we use a fair amount. Uh, Facebook, there's a Facebook page that's available just for the, uh, the volunteers, as well as a public page that uh, people get a lot of, uh, we get a lot of people finding out about our events through that, uh, through that social media, the Facebook page. And then the more traditional kinds of communication through email, uh, and mailings and um, phone communication, which Larry seems to prefer in a lot of situations. Okay, go ahead and go on to the next slide. Really, we've, when, we, uh, when we participate as volunteers, uh, there's a couple of different ways that this can be done. And uh, we have, I, I like to think of it as we have a couple of tracks that we can follow. One is the, the agency organized and facilitated events like our family fishing or community fishing events. These show up on the calendar. If you're available at that time, show up and help and uh, become part of the program that way. Uh, the agency also uh, works with schools and some of the other more formal groups uh, to put events together. We do a lot of different events with school groups in particular and uh, in the eastern part of the state and, and other parts of the state as well. And then the other side of it is the volunteer uh, or instructor organized and facilitated groups. These are things that we're familiar with uh, on our own 
and uh, we can organize events for those folks, family, friends, other social groups that we have, and then working through some of the clubs, the volunteers, the Walleye Association, Cornusker Fly Fishers, and those kind of things. One of the keys, I think, to success with this is the support that we get from the agency, and especially guys like Larry, who was up next. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Larry, and he's going to talk a little bit more about some of the activities that we have. Uh, thank you, Kurt. He's one of our rock star um, youth fishing instructors. He shows up for a lot of things, and I appreciate his support. Uh, next slide, please, Mikhail. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> just briefly, in 1999, we had the Urban Fisheries Program, and through that program, we started doing uh, youth fishing programs. Dozens and dozens of programs with literally thousands of kids. And what was most important with that in from 19, 1999 through the early 2000s was the things we learned from it. We learned a lot about program outcomes. What are we actually getting from our efforts in terms of doing these programs? As importantly, we learned about equipment. Um, we burned through a lot of equipment and trying to figure out the quality and, and the types of equipment. We also figured out what uh, types of programming actually were effective in terms of reaching people and how to teach those programs. What were the important things to say and not say, and, as you will. We also um, learned about staffing and learned that myself and Rick Eads at the time and a couple seasonal just wasn't going to cut it. So we learned that youth fishing instructors, if we invite them in, and partners uh, such as Trout Unlimited and Cornusker Fly Fishers were absolutely imperative in terms of whether we were going to actually get to do these programs or not, because they offered the, the energy, the expertise, and the staffing numbers that allowed them to do programs, because the, the staff that we had just wasn't going to be sufficient. Um, the synergy from those groups, those people coming in and our staff was incredible and allowed us to expand into what we are today. In 2006, we started uh, family fishing nights uh, in earnest in Omaha and Lincoln. Um, through 2008, we just did those in the Lincoln, Omaha area. Um, we started building the staff that wanted to come to those, the youth fishing instructor and the other partners, uh, people like the Corps of Engineers, city parks departments and such. And we learned a bunch about that. In 2008, we, uh, we went full blown on those and started publicizing them. In 2019 and years around then, we expect anywhere through our summer programs to get three to 4,000 participants. And that's uh, probably close to 70 programs across the state. It's pretty obvious that I'm not doing all those programs and, and the seasonal I and are not doing all those programs across the state. And I want to give a shout out to all those youth fishing instructors and partners that are with us today because they're the ones that make it possible. This photograph really illustrates one of those programs and how they function with that team effort. This is the community fishing event we call a family fishing night in Grand Island last August uh, 2019. And this was also additionally a next step program where we were doing um, uh, discover fly fishing. The person you see at the picnic table there is um, Kenneth uh, Weisenhut. He's a Cornhusker Fly Fishers member, and he is an incredible youth fishing instructor. He comes and demonstrates fly tying. He makes it alive for participants. He, he describes the bugs that they imitate, and he shows what, what he can do with some yarn and string. He's incredible. In the background you see, and I'm not sure if that's uh, Julie Carbonell or Mary Kay Wolf um, of our youth fishing instructor. In either case, whoever it happens to be, they both participated in this event in Grand Island um, and they came with me to the event from, uh, from Omaha area and they're, they're um, Trout Unlimited members. A very strong group for us, a very strong participation group. And in effect, this event was entirely made possible through the, the local youth fishing instructor, um, uh, Harold Fankhauser, who facilitates these, these functions in mid-Nebraska mid and facilitates them with his, um, the, the uh, equipment trailer that he and our parks department, Gene Hunt, for instance, here um, in, um, in Grand Island, um, maintain for us. And they make it possible for those youth fishing instructors. 
The other things we've learned um, is that communications is hugely important. We've modified the, the trail tail or fish tails rather. So it is a, a piece of uh, equipment for the youth instructors to learn about um, programs and you know, learn about the activities and how to teach activities. Um, we've um, also learned about different forms of communication since, uh, such as Facebook. We have three forms. We have the agency Facebook that we publicize a lot of our events for participants. We have a family fishing um, Facebook page, which is huge for us. We have a huge following, and that's basically the method we use to publicize events, and we can fill the bus just simply by, by advertising through that. We also have a, a group um, for youth fishing instructors and where we can communicate with each other about different needs. Um, communications includes calendars on a special website we have that shows the, the availability of trailers and equipment, as well as agency calendars for participants as well as volunteers so they can communicate with each other about their needs and their, and their programs and our needs for, for our programs for each other. Um, things we, where we're going, next step programming is huge. Um, Dean's going to talk a little bit about next step programming. We have a lot of really cool ideas. We've tried some things. I think we're on some good tracks. Uh, catfishing, fly fishing. We'll let Dean cover that here in a minute. Um, other things that are going to be important in the future, and we've already tried some attempts and, and we're looking at things, there's diversity outreach. We're not a singular population in Nebraska. We know that. We've already uh, started publishing our, our youth fishing programs. Any brochure will come in Spanish and as well as English. But it's not just about language, it's also about cultural expectations and, and ideas. And there's a lot of them across Nebraska we're discovering. And so diversity outreach is gonna be huge in terms of where we go. Um, and then of course, a big push is going to be understanding what we're doing and fully understanding what the outcomes of our efforts are to make them valuable, both in terms of what we spend on them and, and what we expect, you know, from what the public expects from us. So look for fishing programs and activities. A shout out to all the volunteers who are here with us today. I appreciate your support. You make our world go round. I really appreciate it. And, um, and please consider helping us in those meetings in September that we're going to be calling for. And with that, next slide, and I'm going to turn it over to uh, a rock star participant, uh, youth fishing instructor and, par and partner, Larry Dostal with the Cornhouse for Fly Fishers. Checking one, two, can you guys hear me? All right, um, you can go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, I'm just going to talk about what it's like to be one of these partner organizations that, you know, the Game and Parks leans on um, for volunteers and just to get people engaged with the outdoors. Um, my name is Larry Dostal. I am the current Cornusker Fly Fishers president, and I've been president for the last couple of years, uh, fortunately. Um, we're a nonprofit uh, 501c3 organization um, that was founded in the 1970s uh, by a group of fly fishing enthusiasts. Um, our nonprofit charter is plain. It's stated uh, just getting people involved in the outdoors through fly fishing. And one of the great things about fly fishing is it has lots of nuances and it can engage, you know, an outdoor enthusiast in many different ways. Um, whether it's fly tying, you know, rigging up, fishing for different species, fishing uh, across the country in different ways, whether it's trout or saltwater. Um, so fly fishing uh, really touches on all of the, uh, the sections of the uh, ORAM model. And our organization is really good at, at targeting all that, all those sections of the ORAM model. Um, and our organization has been around for a long time and we have a lot of skilled and, uh, and very knowledgeable folks um, that are willing to you know, volunteer their time uh, to teach people about this sport and, and keeping people engaged uh, in, in the outdoors. Um, and we do partner, I mean, we, we lean heavily on the game and parks for a lot of our, uh, our facilities and our venues for our, a lot of our events. And then in turn, um, the game and parks helps promote some of our events and a lot of our, our events are open to the public. So that's one way we can engage. Um, yeah, uh, go ahead to the next slide, Kayla. Thanks. <clears throat> So 
So one of our direct ways that we engage new and aspiring outdoors, outdoor enthusiasts, uh, fly fishers specifically, is we put on a fly fishing school. And we typically do this at the Shram Park, uh, um, now Outdoor Education Center, which is just a great venue for us. Um, opened up space, there's ponds to fish at. Uh, we do fly tying, fly casting. You get the whole crash course, 101 fly fishing uh, um, crash course um, with a bunch of knowledgeable folks uh, that volunteer their time. You know, we take a Saturday and we really get people involved in the sport. And a lot of these members, they turn out um, and they turn into, you know, lifelong club members, right? That we get a really high turnover. So we engage people right away and get them a fully immersive experience in the fly fishing. Um, and, 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 and everything, and, and we, per, the club provides all of the uh, required equipment. And um, then, I mean, you have a crop of about 30 folks that are ready to, you know, to join the outdoor community um, with, you know, with, with all the knowledge they need to go fishing. And it's just from one day, it's just one thing our club puts together, um, again, with the support of the Game and Parks for letting us use their facility. <clears throat> uh, next slide. Um, another another thing that our club does, I mean, sure, we do lots of volunteering with uh, youth groups and Boy Scouts, school groups. Uh, we we get youth involved in the outdoors and get them interested in fly fishing. Um, <clears throat> as Larry mentioned, we do uh, we we do events at uh, trade shows and uh, like the Ponca um, Outdoor Expo up at Ponca State Park and the other expos in Kearney. Uh, we always have a presence there and we get folks engaged in the outdoors um, and then those all have youth aspects to them but one another thing we do is we volunteer our time with other partner organizations that are fly fishing related uh, casting for recovery trout unlimited uh, project healing waters and we volunteer you know we have a large member base in our club and again very knowledgeable and we'll volunteer and mentor new and aspiring fly fishers through with these organizations. Um, sometimes the local chapters of these organizations don't have a lot of volunteers and they'll lean on, you know, us Cornhusker Fly Fishers and Trout Unlimited uh, to get, you know, other, to get engagement with these new and aspiring members. <clears throat> yeah, next slide. And lastly, our, our main club function is we have monthly meetings, you know, when uh, Pre-COVID, we would have monthly in-person meetings, mainly at either Shram Park uh, or the Outdoor Education Center in Lincoln. Um, when the weather's nice, we'll get together uh, and we'll meet at a state park. Uh, lately, it's been Louisville State Park because that gives us an opportunity to socially distance and still fish and enjoy the outdoors together. We have knowledgeable folks in our club and we like to share our knowledge. And all of our events are open to the public. Uh, you do not have to be a club member, you know, to, to join in in these events. And they, they hit along that whole ORAM model. So we have monthly fly tying um, events at uh, Backwoods in Omaha. We do weekly tying, fly tying events at Cabela's. Uh, we have month, monthly fishing outings or fly tying events that we'll do in, in the winter. And then our main monthly meetings where we'll have presentations on some sort of topic on fly fishing and it really gets folks engaged and we encourage new members to come out to any of these events um, because they're they're welcoming first off our club welcomes new members and we're all very good at sharing our our, our experience and getting people more engaged and fly fishing is just great for that i mean it, it, we can engage people throughout that ORAM model um, more recently just really quick on with the the pandemic and covid we've been moving our online meetings to just a monthly zoom uh facebook live format and and myself the president the next president will get them will talk about a topic um we'll sometimes bring in guests we've had daryl bowers stop in and, and chime in about some topics um and it's just another way to to further engagement uh while we can't be in person um, right now uh so that's that's been a great thing for us and we've actually increased you know we've had members sign up for the club just by you know passerbys you know either through social media contact or, or publishing yeah, on our website or stuff like that. We've had new membership on our club just from this, um, during the social distant times. So that, that can kind of bring this thing full circle with uh, you know, this influx of, of outdoor membership we've had just from COVID 
I mean, this outdoor pres this online presence has given us that uh, that li a little bit of a boost, um, even in the even in this strange time. Um, and that's all I got for you know club involvement. I mean, maybe not every sort of uh, partner organization can do all these, uh, but uh, maybe there's some ideas of stuff you do. And if you need to contact me with ideas, um, my email address is on this e uh, uh, on that sign in list. So please uh, feel free to contact me or the club cornerskerflyfishers.org. We have active social media and active all that stuff. Active website, active, active Facebook. Hit us up. Um, next, we're going to talk about filling in the gaps with uh, Dean Rosenthal of the Game and Parks. Is Dean there? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. I really appreciate what you guys do. Uh, next slide there, Michaela. Okay. Basically, before I start off, I don't just take the opportunity to thank Larry and all the volunteers that he works with. Uh, without each one of them, we wouldn't be able to do the events and the number, reach the number of people that we do. Uh, um, and then we've got a tundra here that may need a okay. I'm getting some feedback here, I guess. Uh, anyhow, the this is something that, you know, we're looking at new audiences, you know, according to, you know, the Recreational Boating and Fishing Foundation, RBFF, they do surveys and stuff through the, all the various states and everything. And they indicated in their last survey, which, you know, is a little bit dated, but female participation is at an all time high. They also indicated that Hispanic par popular, er, participation is at an all time high. And we're, like the director Douglas mentioned, we're in the process of evaluating and, and analyzing some of our permit sales data for this year. And so far, it indicates that about 38% of our new anglers that did not purchase a permit in the last 10 years are women. Um, nationally, as of 2017, the RBFF indicated 45% of the new anglers were women. So women in this outdoors is extremely important. Uh, they bring not only additional aspect to it, but they're more likely to mentor. They're more likely to bring in the kids, the whole family. Uh, so it's extremely important that we, we make sure we target or you know, work well with these people. Uh, the industry is starting to uh, work very hard to promote women in the outdoors by, you know, tailoring the clothing, the boots, the, the waders, the equipment to women, not just to men, which is fantastic. Um, we, like Director Douglas mentioned, we've seen a major increase in the number of permits, fishing permits that uh, have been sold this year compared to the previous uh, years. The big question becomes, how are we going to keep these new anglers, the re new uh, re retained anglers, how do, we, how do we get these people to keep up the sport year after year? As he mentioned, you know, Outdoor recreation is, is good for the mental health and well-being of a person. Um, so we need to look at different ideas on how to reach some of these uh, individuals. Uh, we're looking at some additional workshops and clinics on fly fishing, fly tying. The National Survey indicates that fly fishing participation is an all-time high. One of the ideas we're looking at is possibly trying would be to create a fly fishing catch and release only for one or two weeks on one of our spring trout talk stocking lakes. And then after that initial one to two weeks, then open it up to all fishing and harvest like we would normally have it open after a stocking event. But this would be an opportunity to provide some unique teaching opportunities, unique opportunities to mentor new people into the fly fishing and to really grow that sport a little more than just having to compete with everybody else uh, at a special event. 
a lot of times when we stock these trout, they're very naive. They're very easy to catch. It gives a lot of encouragement and uh, could be a very popular thing if we can work this out. Bow fishing is another activity that's continuing to grow. If you, if you look out there and you look at the new boats and some of the stuff that's being marketed, the new uh, boat fishing equipment and everything, this sport is growing tremendously. And that's another area I think we need to look at. Microfishing, fishing for some unique species like pickerel and some of those things, continues to grow in popularity. It hits a different little niche of people that are interested in creating a bucket list of species to fish for, and they target these things. Uh, Daryl Bauer mentioned a while back that, you know, we'd sampled some pickerel up on the refuge area and immediately, once that hit social media, there were people headed that direction to go fish for those pickerel, to add those to their bucket list. Um, additionally, we need to look at workshops that are tied specifically to species such as largemouth bass, walleye, catfish, uh, to teach not only new anglers wanting to target these species, but also anglers wanting to refine or learn new ideas and techniques. Um, Demographically, as a population in Nebraska, we're changing, and we're changing fairly rapidly. Uh, we need to look at these new groups. We need to teach them on how to fish, how to respect our resources, uh, a little bit about conservation. Um, they come from cultures a lot of times that don't understand conservation, don't understand you know, how to respect the resources that we have. And it's an opportunity to mentor these people to grow and everything. And I think Larry's done a good job on, on trying to reach out to the Hispanic community, uh, some of the other uh, minorities. And there's a tremendous, vast array of different uh, cultures out there that we need to, to reach out and touch. Additionally, there's the local war movement. Uh, we're looking at workshops down on the line, what to do when you harvest a fish? How do you care for them prior to cooking? Uh, you know, people have a tendency to put them on a stringer and drag them around. Uh, need to teach people that, you know, if you want a good product, you need to put them on ice. Uh, healthy cooking techniques, such as grilling, canning, smoking, instead of not everything needs to be fried. Uh, fried food's good, but not everything needs to be fried. Uh, but basically, like Julia mentioned in hers, is providing complete instruction from harvest to table, or as she put it, to fork. And so those are the kind of the things that we're kind of looking at to kind of take people the next step, fill in the gap, so to speak. And with that, I'm gonna pass it on to Daryl Bauer, uh, our outreach specialist with the Game and Parks Commission. And if you don't know Daryl, you, you've been hiding someplace. So, Daryl? Maybe I've been hiding someplace. Uh, we've all been for the last several months. And hey, everybody, it's good to see faces. I wish we were in person. Um, I'm getting tired of these kind of meetings, but at least we get together and look at each other. And I guess all I'm going to do is kind of share a little bit of what I do. And I know from time to time, one people wonder what the heck I do. Um, I'm not fishing all the time. Uh, but let me tell you how I think this fits into R3 and the R3 model. If you maybe remember back uh, that Jeff shared or way back at the beginning this morning. Um, my part, I think, deals a lot more with the retention uh, part of the model. Um, a lot of what I do is working with. Um, current anglers, avid anglers, uh, trying to keep them engaged and involved and uh, looking for new opportunities, new things to experience. Um, and we live in a world uh, that many of us old dogs never dreamed of years ago, uh, where we have this thing called the internet. And that's become a great tool for us. And so a lot of what I do is on the internet, and, and a lot of you may be familiar with that, um, but let me share some things with you. 
uh, some opportunities that are available and, uh, and, th and then how you can use them. Um, you guys know, a lot of you know I blog, um, something that our communication staff asked a couple of us about years ago. And I said, sure, I'll do it, I don't care. Well, all these years later, here I am still doing it. Um, but again, I think it's been a tool to try and keep our anglers engaged. Um, I've often said, you know, I can write stories down, and I love writing stories down for my own self. And then if others like to read them too, that's great. Uh, so I try and put that blog out um, consistently. In fact, I try and do it three times a week just to keep new material out there to keep people engaged. And a lot of that is just informational stuff, what we're doing at Game and Parks, uh, maybe news releases that the anglers need to know about right away. Um, but then, you know, I love to give fishing reports and dig into techniques and methods and all the nuts and bolts. And then, you know, try and keep it light too. It's supposed to be fun and we're supposed to enjoy our time in the outdoors. So I try and work that into my blog too. And then beyond that is the whole Facebook thing. And you guys know Facebook's a free for all. It really is. But again, what a great opportunity uh, to reach people, uh, to answer questions and get messages out there. And I think it's a great way to build this community if you will, this angling community, the Nebraska angling community, you can find that online on a variety of pages. Uh, we've got our Nebraska fishing page uh, here at Fisheries Division, but there's a lot of others out there too. Um, you know, fish, Nebraska Fishery Reports, uh, Nebraska Ice Fishermen, uh, Fishing the Nebraska Panhandle, it goes on and on. You can do a search on Facebook for things related to Nebraska fishing and come up with a number of them. And I try and keep my fingers in several of them uh, because that's an opportunity to answer questions. And again, like I said, engage people, build that community and spread our word. Um, YouTube's out there too, I joke. Um, there's a lot of YouTubers now getting involved in that game. Seems like you can't go fishing anymore unless you have two or three GoPros attached to your hat. Um, and there's a lot of people doing that. We've produced some YouTube videos. Um, you can find on our webpage uh, OutdoorNebraska.org, go to the fishing page, and there's a how-to uh, section there, and you can see some of the um, YouTube videos we've produced, and certainly a great opportunity to do a lot more of those in the future. Uh, I put up the banner of the Nebraska Fish and Game Association. That is an online forum, um, a little bit different than, the, you know, the free-for-all on Facebook, um, but the same kind of community, and that is exactly what those guys are a great community of Nebraska anglers and hunters and a forum there where folks can join, be part of the community, ask questions, find mentors, uh, folks that are willing to share ideas and answer questions and maybe even spend some time on the water or in the field with people. And then of course, you know, we still do some of the more traditional stuff as, as Larry just mentioned, some presentations and public meetings. Some of those have been by Facebook Live or Zoom recently with the, the coronavirus. I look forward to the time where we can get back together and see folks face to face and, and swap stories and actually be together. And then uh, personally, um, the old fashioned phone calls and emails, uh, still do a lot of that too and answer a lot of questions that way. And, and from what I'm answering this year, there are a lot of folks that are new to the outdoors um, with the coronavirus that are getting involved in fishing this year because I'm answering very basic questions from people who are real literally starting at square one. Now, why do I tell you all of these things? It's not to you know brag about, oh, look what Daryl's doing, here's everything that I do, um, but to point out, here's opportunities the rest of you can get involved in too. Um, like I said, Facebook's a free for all. I always tell guys, jump on in, the water's fine. We can use more people there answering questions and mentoring, um, encouraging people and being part of that community. And there's a lot of other opportunities out there too on social media and on the internet to get involved, build community and uh, get more people in the outdoors. I, I wanted to mention, I know we're gonna plug it here coming up, but another thing to keep in mind on Facebook, um, what we're doing here this morning, 
is our uh, Facebook page, uh, the um, Nebraska Hunting and Fishing R3 Partners. Um, and there's another example of a way we can keep in touch and share ideas with each other and establish that community to encourage each other and build capacity. So uh, just some ideas I hope that you can take and uh, use and uh, as we continue to go forward and build this uh, to give you some ideas of what maybe you can do. And I think as we go on now, we're gonna talk about future partner involvement. And I think Chris Edwards is gonna be uh, heading us up for that. All right, well, thanks, Daryl. Um, unfortunately, the voice you're hearing is not Chris Edwards. Uh, this is Michaela back on. Uh, Chris wasn't able to join us today, um, but I wanted to start by thanking all of the presenters today because you know presenting in person is one thing, presenting over Zoom is uh, a totally different thing. And so, you know, without all of you, this meeting wouldn't have been possible. And two, without our R3 executive team, this meeting wouldn't have been possible. Um, putting together an agenda for a high quality meeting is never easy. And so we're really thankful for a lot of the partners who sit on that committee and are able to help us pull things like this together. Um, so that being said, we always want to engage more partners. We cannot do what we do without partner involvement. Whether you represent a conservation organization, um, you own a business, or you're, ju you're just a volunteer who likes to help out. Maybe you don't resonate with any one organization. We really want to involve you. Um, last year at our 2019 R3 Summit, like Jeff said, we had pulled out three main um, subject areas, content areas that we've been talking about today. And if you keep your eye on the agenda, you'll notice that everything we talked about today was assigned a content or a subject area. Those being mentor tools and management, targeting new audiences and filling the gaps. And one of our goals from our 2020 summit was to engage all 93 of you that are on this call um, throughout the year, not just one time a year, not just quarterly when we try to get these groups together, but we want to engage you guys um, throughout the year. We wanna get new people involved because the more ideas, the better. So what you see up on your screen right now is dates for these three future partner involvement opportunities. If there was a subject you really like today, you can pick out which group that it belongs to and join a Zoom call um, in September. Now, the way you're going to get these Zoom call links is you need to follow that Nebraska R3 part, or hunt, it's, I believe the exact title is the Nebraska Hunting and Fishing R3 Partners Facebook group. It's not short. Um, and you're gonna go on there and be able to take a survey about today. And you're basically gonna tell us which um, subject area you're interested in. And then based off of the subject area you're interested in, we will send you the Zoom link um, and the meeting information for these three content groups. And if you're interested in all three, fantastic. If you're interested in one, great. Um, but on that survey, you'll be able to pick out what you're interested in. And that survey will be shared on the Facebook page so you can find it there. And then Jeff will also email email it after the summit in a follow-up email to everyone that was here. So my first big ask is please, please, please take that survey and check out these future partner involvement groups because there are a lot of new people on this webinar which excites us and we want to continue to hear from you and share your ideas. Um, you know, as much as I'd like to think that I have all the good ideas, I don't have them all. Everybody else has them too, so please share. Um, the second thing that I mentioned was that Facebook page. Um, the Nebraska Hunting and Fishing R3 Partners Facebook page is new. Um, this was an idea of the R3 executive team that came about, oh, just a couple months ago, I guess throughout the planning process for this summit. And we wanted to create this page to one, get as many people involved as we could, and two, to provide more regular communication to you all. And we kind of wanted to meet you where you were at. We had initially tossed around the idea of creating a newsletter and letting you guys know the R3 happenings via you know, a paper newsletter or an email newsletter. Um, but we know that everyone's busy and sometimes newsletters aren't the easiest to read. So we created this Facebook group because we know a lot of you are on Facebook anyways. So hopefully um, our notifications and stories and questions pop up in your daily news feed as you're scrolling. And we really do try to do a good job of posting on there. You know, leading up to the summit, we were trying to post almost daily um, and we hope to post weekly following the summit and more. It kind of just depends on the time of year, what's going on. What questions do we have? How do we want to engage the audience? 
So take a look at those three dates there, mark your calendar, fill out that survey that Jeff is gonna email you. It'll also be posted on the Facebook page. Let us know how you wanna get involved and then we'll be sending you more information in the days and weeks to come. So as we wrap up our summit for today, I'm gonna turn these last 15 minutes or so over to Jeff and he's gonna take us home. All right, thanks Michaela. All right, that's better. That, that, that sounds a lot better. But uh, we want to spend the last couple of minutes not, not only uh, making sure that we have uh, answered the questions, but uh, engaging with our partners on the group here as well. And so we have a lot of people that have sent questions in. We have a number of discussion topics that we want to make sure we get an opportunity to, uh, to make sure that we get an opportunity to discuss. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Aaron Hirschberger, who is gonna lead us on those questions and on a bit of a discussion before we're done. And then I'll be back to wrap things up uh, to conclude our, our conference today. As Jeff mentioned, this is where we need to hear from uh, the 90 plus individuals that have been part of this. If you have a question for any of the presenters or about R3 in, uh, in general, uh, feel free to, to ask those. And we can do those a, a few different ways. We've got a few people that have already begun filling out the Google's document with their questions, uh, which we'll get to several of those uh, as we can. Uh, we've had a few things pop up in the chat as well. If you have a question that has not been asked or answered yet, uh, there's three ways you can do it. If you want to while we're doing this for the next few minutes, uh, you can actually raise your, your virtual hand uh, with Zoom by hitting the Alt and the Y button at the same time, Alt, Y at the same time, and, and that'll let us know that you've got a question and, and something you may want to ask in person rather than typing it out. Uh, by the way, if you accidentally hit that and you want to lower your hand or your uh, question is asked or answered by somebody else, uh, you can lower it the same way. Again, you can use the chat button, which is probably... Uh, quick and easy for everybody, and we can keep track of that. Jackson's uh, watching that one pretty closely. Uh, we'd love to capture it on our Google document, so if you can type it in there, uh, we'll, uh, we'll have it uh, even after this meeting, and we can answer some of the questions if there get to be too many of them uh, once we, we close up today. So what I'm going to do here uh, is real quick kind of go over some of the questions and, and point them towards the individuals uh, that can give some of the answers to them. Uh, from today's talk and there's been some good ones here and I know you guys didn't just show up here to listen today so feel free to be part of the conversation and uh, get those uh, hands up get those those questions asked. Uh, first of all um, I, we've gotten several questions that have to do with these presentations uh, whether they'll be uh, available afterwards uh, after we're done today for download to share with others to uh, go over some uh, parts and pieces I know that uh, this has been answered a couple different ways. Obviously, you can probably see that we're recording the actual live event now for those uh, that weren't able to be here and, and wanted to. But uh, Michaela, real quick, uh, you mentioned uh, some of the ways that they can get on that. I know you're going to have it on uh, the Facebook pages or the link as, as well. Is there anything else you want to want to say about that? Watch your email from Jeff is, is the answer on that one as well. Um, we've got a few here about equipment and obviously right now with COVID-19 being in the, the forefront of all of our minds and, and safety for uh, our volunteers, for our staff, for our users, for our participants, uh, there's some questions about that as well. Uh, we do have ice fishing equipment available. We have shooting and hunting uh, equipment that is available. Uh, some different guidelines to, to uh, address uh, the current situations with all those uh, items right now. Uh, and, and specifically, uh, best thing to do is reach out to whoever oversees that equipment. So, so make sure the proper protocols are being followed and it keeps everybody uh, in the, the, the right frame uh, as well. 
Uh, we've got questions about uh, Julia. If you want to answer again, how do I check out a She Goes Outdoor subscription box? Uh, and maybe I'll mute myself so you can hit that one more time. Julia, you're muted. Let's try that again. Uh, you can go to the website at sgooutdoors.com. That particular website will take you directly to the links of the podcast, and then you can see the topics and check out, purchase the, the box itself. And again, it is sgooutdoors.com. Dot com. Uh, that will take you also to our partners, Kansas and Iowa, and their links to their websites and the conservation organizations that are part of the program. So great question. Thanks for asking. All right. Uh, again, be sure to ask the questions that are on your mind right now. You've got a great uh, bunch of resources here that uh, you can get the, the answer directly from the, uh, the horse's mouth, as it were, the professional's in uh, that area. We do have a few that have to do with, do I need to be part of a group to, to mentor or to take somebody out? Um, how do I get involved? And obviously we've got a lot of great groups represented today and it's always good to see what they have going on, whether it's a Pheasants Forever uh, Youth Hunt Next Steps uh, initiative, or if you wanna become a, an angling a mentor instructor, uh, we've got all sorts of great tools to, to be a part of that. But again, a part of what we talked about, especially when it comes to that, that networking online opportunity, is we want everyone to be able to help out to uh, be part of the solution. So uh, you don't have to be, though there's a lot of benefits to being part of a group oftentimes. We just need some interested individuals uh, to make that, that happen. Also, how do I get current R3 information? Um, as Michaela talked about earlier, being part of that R3 Facebook page, great spot. Uh, you can go to facebook.com slash Nebraska R3 partners, and that's where a lot of good information is being posted. I encourage everybody, if you're already not on that page, to, to get involved so that you can be, so you can see some of the updates, because there's a lot of things happening out here that uh, really help get folks in the fields. Uh, and kind of keep us pumped up. I mean, the best way we do things is as a group and as a community, and that's kind of what we're, we're here today. So um, questions again, make sure you either raise your hand or uh, type them up in the, the chat and or uh, uh, the Google documents out there. So uh, anybody have a, a question off the top of their head? I'm gonna stop reading and talking and, and just see who wants to ask the next question. Kind of a shy group here, I see. No, I haven't seen that. That one must stop. Last question. Okay. Refresh here. All right. Great question. We heard a lot of discussion about recruiting and which groups to recruit, but not enough discussion on how to recruit. We all have a good idea of what we should do once we have made contact with these folks, but a large number of those people have reached out and found us. How do we go about recruiting the large group of people who haven't thought about or who aren't aware that hunting and fishing is something they can do? And that is a great question that uh, we've spent a lot of time trying to reach out to, to new markets. And basically, there is part of that. Um, Jeff, you've dealt a lot with this, so I'm going to turn my microphone over to you. I know that's dangerous, but uh, if you want to hit on that one real quick, it's a, it's a great. It is a great question. And uh, I, I would answer it by this. Uh, one of the key features or key, key efforts that our agency uh, has embarked on the last uh, year and a half uh, was, was the understanding that uh, out of any sport, in America, we have one of the largest mentor pools uh, of just about any sport out there. Uh, and, and we need to engage that mentor pool. We have uh, one of the largest mentor pools of our current hunters, our current anglers, our current shooting sports enthusiasts. And 
engaging that 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 pool of potential mentors uh, has uh, has not always been uh, easy for uh, state fish and wildlife agencies. We took a leap of faith and embarked on the Take em campaign uh, a, a year and a half ago that uh, has resulted in thou several thousand uh, new matchups of people uh, getting involved in hunting and fishing for the first time. Uh, we're real happy about that. Uh, all of our partners are doing programs that are reaching out to new participants. We're, we're starting to understand how to reach out to new participants, people who don't necessarily fit the mold or haven't been part of the, the, the hunting and fishing family uh, yet, and starting to retarget a lot of our programs to find those people. Uh, that's been a phenomenal effort and is going to uh, promote phenomenal change in our three efforts moving forward. So a lot has happened, a lot is happening. And then, of course, better evaluating of what we have been doing uh, has something we've take, undertaken over the last couple of years to learn what the value is and are we reaching the right people uh, and reaching those target audiences. And so uh, a lot has happened, a lot will continue to happen. But, uh, and, and so, yes, very cognizant of that and uh, absolutely a great question. And, and I'd add that uh, it's, it's something that's going to take everybody's involvement in to get into those groups and those uh, areas of influence. I think a lot of times people do find things uh, like the Nebraska Fish and Game Association message board. They find uh, Kevin Paulson's uh, group, Hunting Net, uh, to get out there and, and uh, kind of spread the word. Uh, I know within an agency and with some of our organizations, you know, we've been at uh, farmers markets, we've been doing some, some pub nights, trying to reach out into some of those different areas. Uh, but the more we do that, they're all gonna gain us a little bit here and there. We might find a gold nugget every time uh, or every other time or, or every once in a great while, but we're also looking for those little specks, that gold dust out there that uh, we can pull up and, and make into to something. Uh, so, you know, we've reached out to big brothers, big sisters, uh, groups like that. Uh, church groups, all that type of stuff. I don't think there's any bad audience by any means, but it's going to take a, a lot of effort to get out there. And part of that hunting network that uh, I mentioned earlier and talked about for just a few minutes, uh, a communication strategy and a toolkit is something that we're working to get uh, not only those mentors that hadn't thought about it, uh, but may be interested and want to help, but also a little bit on speaking to some of the terms and, and values of those that, that, like you said, or what the question stated, uh, might be interested, might not realize they can do that type of stuff. So that's always a, a fun challenge that we have and, and working towards. All right, I think uh, I don't want to spend a whole bunch more time because I know uh, you guys have a lot of things to do. We really appreciate, again, that you guys spent uh, your morning with us. If you've got more questions, again, you've got the three routes. Put it on the Google document, put it in the chat, or raise your hand and I can get to you on the chat, and we'll answer uh, some of those even after today. But I need to hand it back over. Uh, so that we can kind of uh, wrap on this and, and uh, call to action. Jeff, I think you're going to handle this uh, wrap up. Thanks, Hershey. And, and once again, thanks to uh, all of our speakers this morning. Uh, people, you took time out of your schedules to come enlighten us on programs, opportunities, uh, areas for collaboration and partnership. And, uh, and I hope, uh, and, and I believe we have, uh, turned that... Uh, turn that light on in, in many on the call today uh, to, to highlight areas that you can become involved in uh, or areas to, to continue to join us uh, in these efforts moving forward. And, and obviously appreciate everybody who took time out to be on the call today. As Director Douglas said in her opening remarks, this, uh, this immense uh, turnout is a testament to the, the passion and support we have in Nebraska for hunter, angler, and shooting sports uh, and outdoor uh, in R3 here in Nebraska. And uh, we're very proud of that. Uh, we're, we're very cognizant of the fact that uh, you're, you're giving us a lot of your time and effort. And uh, we want to use that as wisely as we can to collaborate and partnership together. I will say this, uh, what we talked about today is only a, a, a really small portion of what's going on uh, with Nebraska Game and Parks, all of the partner groups, fishing, hunting, shooting sports groups across the state. Those of you on the call know that. Uh, you know that, uh, well, we didn't necessarily talk about your program or your activity because there's such an immense amount of activities. Uh, I would say the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission in the last uh, eight or 10 years has broken the mold uh, when it comes to partnerships and collaboration 
and the R3 efforts are certainly a, a small part of that collaboration and partnership. And it's easy to see there is a ton of partnerships uh, that are driving the R3 effort now and will continue to drive the R3 effort in, uh, in uh, the, the months and years to come. Uh, we've done a lot of things in this agency that we haven't even uh, scratched the surface on uh, with respect to the call today. Uh, we created an education plan that uh, will guide our education efforts over the next five years, uh, making our, our educational efforts within the agency and our partners uh, more collaborative, even more collaborative and uh, uh, stronger uh, over the next several years and more focused over the next several years. We're really excited about that. Uh, developed a fish and wildlife education division to uh, uh, focus on education efforts that will have huge impacts, potentially huge impacts on everything we're talking about or portions of what we're talking about uh, here today. We have new projects that, uh, as Director Douglas alluded to, new grants that we're looking forward to uh, through the Midwest Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies that uh, we hope to uh, continue to obtain and move forward different projects and ideas, some we've alluded to here this morning, others that we're still working on, but uh, rest assured uh, will have profound impacts. We can't be more excited about where R3 is heading, the, the potential for R3 in Nebraska, uh, the, the capacity uh, for the mentoring efforts, uh, the outdoor skills efforts, the learning efforts that we uh, have here in the great state of Nebraska. You all are a major part of that. Uh, being here today is another step forward in your commitment to the R3 effort uh, and your passion uh, for making sure that we pass on this heritage uh, in better condition than we found it and that uh, we are doing so in a way that makes hunting and fishing and shooting sports, the outdoor pursuits that we hold dear in Nebraska, uh, top of mind and just as important to the generations before us and the many generations before them. So once again, thank you for all that you're doing, all that you will do. I invite you to our Facebook group page that Michaela uh, has talked about, and I invite you to the upcoming meetings uh, in September uh, to further uh, hone in on ways you can join us in areas that you feel most engaged uh, to continue this R3 effort. Thank you all very much for your participation today.